Good morning, folks. Yesterday we watched a coronal cavity form out of nowhere in the wake of a filament eruption. As of this morning, the magnetic force is creating the void concentrated plasma on the southern edge, and it is lifting. Before we even get started today, we've got an eruption in progress. We'll see the full thing tomorrow, but let's come now to spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star in 193 angstroms, dark coronal hole exiting on the north, bright active region turning in just near the equator. We're going to have to monitor that sunspot group as it faces Earth the next two to three days, as it has indeed been quiet while facing Earth, but has refused to put down the weaponry. Magnetic mixing with beta-gamma classification, now on the verge of delta with multiple such potential points. Now the solar flare watch is rising as the solar wind watch diminishes. The stream has exhausted its fastest measure and did so as Earth's magnetosphere was in adjustment mode, so we're actually much calmer at peak intensity than we were at initial shockwave impact. Top quake of the day struck those electron anomalies many of you noticed over the Atlantic Ocean. Those were one of the first and most important seismic ionosphere connections that science discovered. Today's links are crucial and we begin with Dr. Robitaille at Sky Scholar. Folks, he does a simple experiment to test Kirchhoff's law and he states that when Kirchhoff's law falls, much of modern astronomy will have to change. Here's what you need to know. MRI machines do what they do because of him. He put eight Tesla magnets in when everyone else said he was going to fry people's brains. He set the world record and is recognized for doing so, but it took him disagreeing with an old law of physics to get it right. That's why everyone else thought he was going to fry people's brains, and now he's seeing where else that faulty law applies, astronomy and astrophysics. Up next, July Global Climate Report, and after we pull the land only, we'll go to land plus ocean and get ready to play our favorite game, Watch the Blue Disappear. We play this every month because while the real data shows a nice mix every month of hot and cold, the one without much blue here is the one that paints a very different and somewhat inaccurate picture of what happened the last month on the planet, and it's the only one shared worldwide on the internet. We're going to go through and just focus on location after location to watch how legitimate temperature readings are all slid to one side of the scale. This is how the world thinks about climate change, and that makes this silly second grade color discussion of significant importance. Lastly, folks, NASA is holding to its commitment to figure out more about space weather and human health. It is clear that both NASA and NOAA are full steam ahead on the topic of how the sun and cosmic rays affect our planet and our bodies. I summarized all the existing literature on the subject in one of the chapters of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. The Disaster Prediction app is the only one on Earth that will send space weather health alerts and we report as fast as NOAA. And space weather and human health is a topic of focus at the upcoming Observing the Frontier 2018 conference. Both Dr. Dunning and one of our new speakers, Dr. D'Amico, will be discussing human health and our star. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 525 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.